being 7-12 on Monday, October 7, 2013. I'll call this October town meeting to order. Do we have a motion to admit, Mr. Masseri? Uh, Mr. Moderator, I move to move that the following persons be admitted to the meeting. Greg Valiaconis, Town Administrator, Elizabeth Pago, Finance Director, Darren Klein, Town Council, Robert Taros, Transcript, Carol Ducro, Town Clerk Staff, Kathleen Willis, Superintendent of Schools, Michael Conley, Director of Finance and School Department and, and Operations for the School Department, Eugene Torek, IT Department, Town Hall, Helen, Helena Mil uh, Minton, Library, Alan, Allison Olson, Human Resources, Mary Ann McKay, Treasurer and Collector, Amy Lukowitz, Youth Services, Michael Murphy, Police Chief, Rob Car uh, Carbone, Norcamp, uh, with Freedom of the Floor. All, that also goes for uh, uh, Bob Toros. Jason Smith, uh, Norcamp, Freedom of the Floor. Debbie Carbone, Assessor, Town Hall. Richard Caravelle, uh, DPW. That's Richard Carnivale. Randy Carlson, Nine Abbott Road, Martin Fair, North Reading Health Agent. Maureen Stevens, Director of Parks and Recreation. Daniel McGinnis, Planning Administrator. Sue Magner, Veterans. And John Dunn, Seven Little Meadow Way, North Red. Discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. While the visitors are coming into the hall, let me go through um, a, a few items. Um, the visitors, town boards, and committees can sit in the center section in the, uh, the front few rows. Other visitors can sit in the section to my right in the first few rows. The tellers for this evening are Chuck Carucci, who will be counting the front and the section to my left. And Ed McGrath will be counting the center section and to my left. All uh, all town meeting participants should be wearing a red ribbon and visitors should have a black ribbon. And please wait for the moderator to recognize you before speaking. And I would ask that everyone turn their cell phones off, even though you're watching the game. At this time, if we could have the Pledge of Allegiance from Chairman DeLay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do we have a motion to Mr. Delaney? Mr. Moderator, I move to dispense with reading of the warrant. It referred to the articles by number and further to dispense with the reading of the return of service by the constable. We have the motion and the discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Article 1, Mr. Delaney. 
Mr. Moderator, Article 1, hear and act on reports of town offices and committees. We move to hear reports of town offices and committees as may be presented at this meeting. We have several committees who would like to give reports this evening. I'd like to call on Ed McGrath from the Recycling Committee. Mr. McGrath. Thank you, Mr. Moriarty. I appreciate the opportunity not to follow Chuck Carucci. Um, so this is going to be quick. Um, we got hot off the presses. I want to give the update of where we are after three months in this fiscal year with the new trash limits. Uh, the code mingle is up 46% from last year, 152 tons from 104 tons. Paper is up 28% from last year. 198 tons versus 155 tons. Trash is down 7%. And the, we're right now, this year, we've got 1,126 tons versus 1,214 tons. The recycling rate for the first three months is 23.7%. In FY13, after three months, it was 17.6%. So we're, the trend is, we've gotten off to a great start this, this fiscal year. Um, the final numbers for FY13, the recycling rate was 19.5%. We avoided $83,479 in tipping fees. Aver over the past eight years, we are averaging $88,500 in avoided tip fees, total of $708,000. And to help increase those numbers, there are two changes to the recycling program. Number one, pizza boxes. Go in your recycling bin, no questions asked. Whatever you get, whatever's on the cardboard, put it in the paper box. Number two, juice and milk cartons like this one. Go with your plastics. Co-mingle, plastics, glass, and metal. So milk, juice, cream, uh, whatever. They can go, they go in with the plastics. That's something new. It's a change in the, uh, what's been happening in the industry and we're able to take advantage of it. Um, just upcoming events and a couple of minor things. Um, number one, very shortly in the next week or so, we are going to announce dates for the curbside yard waste collection. We have a new contract with JRM. We are getting two in the fall and two in the spring. The two dates for the fall will be announced shortly. Um, second, thankfully, the, we have 100 friends on Facebook. We're happy. If you're interested, go to North Reading Recycling on, on Facebook and friend us. We use that to promote events and make announcements of what's going on. Also, on the table in the lobby, those green recycling stickers, Mr. Webster, can you hold yours up for the sake of? Those are available. If you need an, if, if you're wondering about getting an extra recycling bin and got an empty trash barrel in your garage, get one of those. It becomes a recycling bin. It's magical. We also have postcards out there. If, if you have a TV or a CRT you need to get rid of, or your neighbor's had it on his front lawn by his driveway for the last couple of months, you can pick one up and drop it off in your mailbox. And if you have questions about paper recycling, there's a handout we made a couple of years ago, but it's still valid, and it lists the different type of paper products we have. And that is the end of my speech. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I'd now like to call on Chuck Carucci. Mr. Carucci will be giving two reports. One is for the Secondary School Building Committee, and the second is for the Hillview Commission. For the Secondary School Building Mr. Carucci has asked for a 10 minute leave of the meeting for purposes of a presentation for the Secondary School Building Committee. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. 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 Ten minutes. As part of the Secondary Building Committee, uh, it's hard to believe that we've been 14 months into this project. And if you look up on the hill, you can see what's happening. Uh, we're on budget, we're on time, and that's a good thing for us. Uh, just to give you a little timeline on a couple of things that are going to happen, you'll see them, they'll all be down front. One of them is there's a team room going in, uh, down at the turf field, which will, they'll start digging this week. And then in April, the little, there will be a little confusion 
down on the entrance of 62 in the entrance to the school. That's when they're going to start the lights down there and widening the road. Also tonight, I know most of you people see the building from the street. We put up a few photos of what the back of the building looks like and what part of the interior looks like. With the help of the town administrator, who's going to run this for me. Yeah, correct, let me see. You got your button? Just push the button. Okay. Uh, you see? All right, you see where we are with the front of the building. People have asked, <coughs> How come we didn't do the left side? And the reason, the reason for that is they still had to load in some equipment into the building. So rather than destroy the brick in the front of the building, that'll be the last part to be done. If you go up there and look, you can see they've done the rear part of the building is already completed. And they're moving around to the left side. Uh, next. That's the back of the building. All right. And as of now, that's completed to the top. All right, that's an older picture. And by the way, I would like to thank Jeff Simons, who's our resident uh, photographer for this project, who's done a fine job. Okay. And this is the roof. It's, a, it's going to be a complete white roof, rubber roof up there. Uh, we do not like to see anybody up on this new roof that's up there. Okay, which has happened in the last week or so. Next. Uh, this is a uh, science room. This is one of the classrooms. All right, these are things you don't see and you can't see from the outside. But that is going to be a uh, science lab. The little pipes that stick out, those are the gas fittings for that room, for the science room. And this is what the interior of the building looks like, the hallways. That's a dress block, a finished block, which they stand out, and that's what the walls are going to look like in the hallways and also in the bathrooms, which means it'll be very hard to destroy them. Next. Uh, this is the center of the high school with the skylight, which drops down the three floors, and that skylight is going in the uh, cover in the next couple of weeks that's on site. Next. Uh, this one here is the stairwell. There's a stairwell on each end of the building of the high school, and that's the beginning of the stairwell with the finished block. <coughs> Next. And it's just to show you some of the infrastructure, the plumbing, and the electrical that's in there, in the uh, HVAC that's in there, and that's in one of the hallways. Next. And this is the gymnasium from the back side in the locker rooms. Locker rooms on the lower half, the gymnasium on the higher half. We have a full gymnasium in there, plus we have an auxiliary gymnasium uh, in the back part of that building. Next. And this is the layout of the gymnasium, the electrical that's going under the floor in the gymnasium. This gymnasium is uh, Probably two and a half times the size of the gymnasium we have now. Next. And this is what we call Main Street. This is the center part of the building where if you're looking down, you're looking towards the back of the parking lot. And this will be completely open. Uh, one side is the gymnasium. The, uh, another side of that is the cafeteria. And that's looking out to the back of the building. Next. And that's looking into where the, it's hard to visualize, but that's looking into both cafeterias, the middle school and the high school cafeteria. Next. And this is the mechanical room down below on the bottom level. This is where all the boilers and the air conditioning uh, compressors will be. This is the media center, which in my old days was known as the library. <laughs> uh, but that's where the media center, and that faces the parking lot at the middle school. The entrance to the high school is just beyond that, where those gentlemen are working, that'll be the entrance. 
and the library sits to the left hand side. All right, this part here, that's the top half of the auditorium. And this back part is band room and chorus rooms for both the middle school and the high school. Next. And this is what the auditorium's gonna look like. Looking down, the stage is out front, and the seating is up the back here. We have seating for 650. Right. So it's gonna be a good size auditorium. We're going to sell seats if anybody's interested for the best looking seats there. Thanks. All right. This is the, uh, this is the septic system the system we had to put in. We had to put a treatment plant in, and this is where it's put in. There'll be a building going over that, and everything will be treated there and then pumped out to the uh, legion field. As you can see, it's down in the lower half of the parking lot behind the gymnasium. Next. And this is our final picture. This is from the kids at the middle school. Thank you for I can't bring you, building, building our new school. And the kids have put that sign up there for everybody to see. And with that, thank you. Okay, my other duty is I'm part of the Hillview Commission. And on October 20th, from 1 to 4, we are having an open house at the Hillview Country Club. And there are going to be a lot of things going on. Uh, we're we're uh, <clears throat> having uh, burgers and hot dogs on the house. Uh, anybody who wants to tour the course, the members will take them around in the car, or you can walk around the course that day. And there's going to be a lot of things there for the kids. And even if you don't play golf, there's a lot happening that day. So this is the 25th anniversary. This is quite the thing for the town. So I hope everybody can attend and come by and see us. Thank you. We also have a presentation from the community impact team, Amy Lockwood. cooperation among agencies and the departments of North Reading. And as you can see in our mission statement here, it reaches all citizens, <laughs> that, and it does take a lot of work from our leadership team. The team meets regularly to make sure that there's follow-through on programs and events. And I'd like to take just a moment to recognize the leaders of the team. Um, Select Mr. Seri, Chief Murphy, Chief Warnock, Superintendent Willis, Rita Mullen, and Mary Preddy, Director of Elder Services, who is with me today. I want to share with you just a couple of the highlights that we've reached since the team's inception. One of the most useful projects is the Youth Risk Behavior Survey. It's identified issues that are specific to North Reading and youth so we can target our efforts to com combat substance use, violence, or any other quality of life issues. This survey was given to a sample of 6th to 11th grade students this past spring and the results will be available um, and are being evaluated by an external analyst this winter. This year, the team also purchased 20 books on the subjects of, subject of bullying prevention. The books will be divided up by grade level and donated to each of the public schools, as well as the Flint Library. We'd also like the public to be aware that there is an anonymous text-to-tip line that can be used by texting NRPD plus their tip to tip 411. I have to mention, of course, to like us on Facebook. We're at 75 likes, and we hope to hit the 100 mark at the Recycling Committee. Part of one of those committees is our social service action team. We met about a year ago, May, and we created a community impact crisis and resource guide. This guide is made up of all different types of social services in the area. It has um, reference to schools, LGBTQ 
legal assistance, health insurance, fuel assistance, employee assistance, specific just for North Reading residents. These books are available online, you can get it, or they're available at the Senior Center. There are also books available to anybody who may want to take home. It's a great resource. These books are also available at everyone's desk in Town Hall and at everyone's desk uh, in uh, the school department. So if anybody has information, it puts us in touch with each other, and it's a wonderful resource guide. Um, we also were able to print out our um, file of life. For those of you who don't know what a file of life is, it's a little gadget like this with a magnet in the back of it which you can stick on a refrigerator. In it, it's a piece of, um, a, a piece of paper that people can put their information on, their names, their health insurance, their drug reactions, their next of kin, emergency contacts, doctor's numbers. And what happens when our first responders, and our first responders know exactly what to do, because we have great first responders in North Reading, they go to someone's home and they see this on the refrigerator, they automatically grab this information and they bring it with them if they have to bring them to the hospital, so all the information is intact. A lot of times people just put doctor's appointments in this card. This card is not specific only to senior citizens. It can help anyone in an emergency, so if you want some of these, or some of the back of the hall. We also have these available at the Senior Center. Um, we purchased a lot of them for our computer impact team. We had them at the National Night Out, so I want to thank the team for purchasing these. And um, I really want to say this is really a true community um, program, because as you can see, we have youth services and elder services together, and whatever mixes in between. So it's been a great program, and I wish the whole town takes advantage of anything that we're offering. Me. And by the way, today is Amy's birthday. So she's <laughs> celebrating here in the poetry. Thank you. Thank you. Without any question, my favorite event from um, the Community Impact Team was the 2013 National Light Out. We had over 600 people attend with over 20 vendors, which included uh, support groups, senior, ser senior services, and even a free bike safety check for anybody that rode their bike to the event. We also offered local presenters, including senior and youth self-defense, a pool safety presentation, and dance teams. No question about it, the most commented upon presenter was the state canine teams. We had three teams put on about a 15 minute presentation with, within touching distance of the audience. And I know for sure that people left there with a greater appreciation for these, uh, law, this law enforcement team. And I have to also give thanks to our volunteers and the board of selectmen Parks and Recreation, North Reading Fire, and police who got into the dunk tank, uh, set up the stations, or even cooked free barbecue. The, the event was free for anybody attend, who attended. We served over 500 hot dogs and burgers that day. This is just a note on our action teams, and I want to invite anybody who's interested in any of these teams to contact us and volunteer within any of the action teams that you see, communications and PR, the K-12 programs, youth services, social services, public safety, or the business coalition. So what's coming up for next year? As we've been implementing our plans and gaining momentum, and as we move forward, the state of Massachusetts would like us to make ourselves available to other towns who might be interested in developing a similar team or structure to our community impact team. We're very excited to do this and expect to serve as a mentor to other communi communities as early as 2014. <coughs> we'll also be offering um, the programs such as the Peer Leadership Spo Scholarship, which is an incentive-based youth group. Participants will need to apply to the group, sign a contract of sobriety, and attend regular meetings to make an impact in North Reading. The tools and evaluations that are going to come from the Youth Risk Survey will be available this winter, and we're going to use that to set up our other programming. It's also very important to mention that we cannot thank Senator Tyre and Representative Jones enough for their work on helping us secure a $25,000 grant for 2014. Their staff were great to work with, and they really facilitated the whole process from beginning to end for us. And as you can see, we have some big plans, and we greatly appreciate the support. to be heard. Does the Board of Selectmen wish to make a recommendation on the report? Board of Selectmen unanimously recommend. 
Okay, we have the motion. All those in favor to accept the reports as presented, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous? There is a, we, we do have a motion to admit. Also, there was a handout, a yellow sheet, um, which contains all of the monetary articles. If you don't have one and you raise your hand, the staff will come down and, and get one to you so you can get all on one sheet of paper the monetary articles that will be taken up tonight. So on the motion to admit, a motion to admit, Mr. Delaney. Mr. Moderator, I move that the following person be admitted to the meeting, Francine Gonzalez Green, 6 Oak Deal Road. A motion to admit, discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Article 2, Mr. Delaney. Mr. O'Leary. Uh, Mr. Moderator, uh, I would ask uh, leave of the media to uh, put a personal privilege to uh, honor uh, the passing of uh, Mr. John Davis, uh, who for a lot of the newer people to town was a fine gentleman over here, he used to greet you at the door of the check-in here at town meeting, but he spent a number of years here raising his eight children and uh, contributing to the community, Main Street Rezoning Committee, uh, Wheats Building Committee, uh, Property Reuse Committee, Historical Commission, Middle School, Mass Science Tutor, Engineering Assessment of Town Old Buildings, um, and the Door Teller at Town Meeting. Uh, Mr. Davis passed away a couple of months ago, and I would ask uh, leaving the meeting just for a moment of silence uh, in his uh, Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Larry. Thank you, Mr. Larry. Mr. Delaney, Article 2. Mr. Moderator, Article 2, prior year's bills. I move to transfer from free cash the sum of $861 to pay prior year's bills as specified in Article 2 as printed in the warrant. We have the motion to support a select commissioner recommendation, Mr. Delaney. Board of Selectmen is unanimously recommended. Does the Finance Committee wish to make a recommendation? Finance Committee unanimously recommend. Discussion. This requires a four-fifths vote as it's a prior year bill. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Article 3, Mr. Delaney. Mr. Moderator, Article 3, fund the FY 2013 snow and ice deficit. I move to pass over Article 3 as printed in the warrant. We have a motion to pass over. The support of selecting which to make a recommendation. Mr. Delaney. Mr. Moderator, the uh, board unanimously recommends to pass over as this, these funds will be paid from the FY14 budget reserve. Does the Finance Committee wish to make a recommendation? Mr. Powell. Finance Committee recommends to pass over. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Article 4, Mr. Masseri. Mr. Moderator. I move to transfer from free cash the sum of $300,000 to be added to the Capital Improvement Stabilization Fund established under Article 5 of the October 1, 2007 Annual Town Meeting as specified in Article 4 as printed in the warrant. We have the motion. Does the Board of Selectmen wish to make a recommendation? Mr. Masseri. The Board of Selectmen unanimously recommends. Does the Finance Committee wish to make a recommendation? Mr. Powell. Finance Committee recommends. Further discussion? Mr. Masseri. Just as a matter of explanation, we set this fund up in uh, 2007 for the purposes of 
having money to uh, help supplement our debt service each year. So this money is being put in there such that we have additional money to cover debt service in our next fiscal year budget, which we'll be voting on in June of 2014. Further discussion? This is stabilization fund requires a two-thirds vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Article 5. Mr. Masseri. Mr. Moderator, I move to transfer from free cash the sum of $110,000 to be added to the stabilization fund as specified in Article 5 as printed in the warrant. Recommendation from the Board of, Mas Board of Selectmen, Mr. Masseri. The Board of Selectmen unanimously recommends. The Finance Committee, Mr. Paul. Finance Committee unanimously recommends. Further discussion? Mr. Masseri. The Town Stabilization Fund is there. It's kind of a rainy day fund in case we have some major issues. It also has implications on our debt uh, rating in terms of uh, when we want to borrow money, what kind of interest rates we're going to get. And the goal is to get that amount of money in stabilization to a higher level. So. Uh, Adding $110,000 this year is appropriate, and the Board of Selectmen unanimously recommends. Further discussion? Th this is stabilization requires two thirds vote. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Article 6, Mr. Masseri. Mr. Moderator, I move to pass over Article 6 as printed in the warrant. Recommendation for the Board of Selectmen, Mr. Masseri. Board of Selectmen unanimously recommends. For the Finance Committee, Mr. Paulo. Finance. Committee unanimously recommends uh, to pass over. Um, the Finance Committee would wish to emphasize that the town has other future post employment benefit liabilities of at least $35 million. As of the present, that number has not yet been precisely ascertained by the town, and therefore we would advocate delaying putting aside funds to pay for these obligations until June of 2014. By that time, the town should have a, a detailed estimate and it will be possible to come up with an updated dollar amount that we need to put aside every year. This will be done through the Finance Department at the request of the Board of Selectmen. However, the longer we delay this past next June, the greater the yearly sums in the future we will have to allocate. So it would be prudent to start setting aside money soon, rather than to let this problem fester. If we do not, we face severe consequences in the future that other towns in this country are now facing. And services may have to be severely cut, and taxes may have to be raised. We emphasize that this problem is something we do need to address. Thank you. Further discussion? I would like to... Sir, you need to go to the microphone and then I need name and address for the record, please. I live at 
to the Mount Vernon Street. And uh, I am uh, one of the reasons that I attended this meeting tonight was I'm very interested in these post-employment benefits liability trust funds. <coughs> I always find that the information that we're provided is deficient. The question that I ask is how come we don't provide more information about what kind of liability we incur, we encounter because of these so-called post-employment benefits liability trust fund. I understand that we have 11 unions in town, and uh, I understand that they are uh, very effective at negotiating good contracts. So my question is, can't we at the hear more about the liabilities that we're going to be facing in the future on these funds. Why do we have to wait until the meeting in, what is it, the, the uh, 2014 meeting in October, or later this year, to find out what those uh, liabilities are going to do. This gentleman that just spoke prior uh, to this from the Finance Committee, I'm sorry I didn't really get his name because my hearing is defective, but he mentioned that uh, this could mean raising the homeowners' taxes because they have very few options in terms of uh, procuring money to support these uh, liabilities. Yet nobody that I have heard tonight have said what these liabilities are going to amount to. And uh, I would be very interested in learning what those are, even if it means that you could provide it in the transcript or one of the newspapers uh, so that we could prepare ourselves for this next meeting. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Messier. Just as an explanation, uh, retirement benefits, including health insurance for our retired employees, uh, is paid for currently on an annual basis out of the town budget. Under state law, in 2040, the goal is to put money into a fund such that you're not paying for that on an annual basis. In other words, there's enough money held in the retirement pool to cover the expenses of our retirees for any given year. So the state is, uh, over the past several years, I don't remember the exact dates, uh, changed the requirement to get that resolved, I think from 2030 to 2040. And then currently, I think there's some bills, and Mr. Jones may want to comment later, uh, related to this. And we wanted to find out just where the state was going on it. We also realize it's a big, big amount of money, and these small amounts that we've put in in the past will never get us to the goal. So between now and June is the plan of the Board of Selectmen to work out a comprehensive plan of getting, meeting our goal, laying it out in such a way that we can affordably move into the point where we're putting enough money into the fund such that we meet the state requirements in 2040 or whenever they end up for the final year. I hope that answers your question, Mr. It doesn't tell me how much we're required to get. Mr. O'Leary. <coughs> uh, right now there's an audit, an audit ongoing, but it'll be somewhere between 35 and $40 million is what the town of Northridge liability is going to be. As Mr. Masseri said, you know, currently we're paying on a uh, pay-as-you-go basis. As people retire and the benefits are accrued and in, in are owed, we pay through the county assessment as to what our current obligation is for the current year. What we haven't done, like most communities in the town of Northridge, like the town of Northridge, most communities in the Commonwealth, as well as the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, we have not set aside 
uh, enough reserves to cover that liability. So we're just going to pay as you go. Uh, current employees pay you know, approximately 10% of their pay towards their pension. You know, we pay about 70% of their uh, health insurance benefits. But and retirees pay 50% of their health insurance benefits. Uh, but what we're paying for right now under our current county assessment are those uh, retirees that we're paying it at 5 and 7%. Uh, so we're paying a low amount now, but we're going to owe a substantial amount down the road. Uh, so what the legislature is doing, uh, they've kicked it down the road a little bit more to give themselves and the uh, municipalities a little bit more breathing room in order to meet. I mean, there's no doubt that there's going to be town employees going forward, you know, to help pay what they're kicking in is going to help pay the current retirees' benefits. Uh, but it's still not the right way to do it. Uh, Social Security, we pay in now. Uh, employees pay in half. The town hasn't paid in their portion to this point. So the liability is going to be between 35 and 40, 40 million dollars, and we're going to have to come up with a way somewhere somehow to, uh, to, to fund it. So uh, we're looking to do something over the next several months to come up with some sort of comprehensive plan, uh, look to the legislature to get some sort of guidance as to what they're planning on forcing communities to do. And the accountants are, are forcing us to recognize this liability on our books, which was never required before. So there lies the, uh, the hook whereby we have to show it on the books. And so you'll be seeing it shortly. And my guess is that once that audit report is out, I'm sure the town administrator will be happy to throw it up on the website for everybody's uh, perusal. Okay. Further discussion? We have a motion to pass over. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Article 7, Mr. O'Leary. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I move to amend the fiscal year 2014 operating budget uh, voted under Article 14 of the June 3rd, 2013 annual town meeting as follows. Raise and appropriate the sum of $80,744 to be added to line 29, pension and benefits, county retirement. Ironic. Uh, two, raise and appropriate the sum of $5,882.78 to be added to line 42, health department salaries, animal control, Three, raise and appropriate the sum of $703.81 to be added to line 54, elder services salaries as specified in Article 7 as printed in the warrant. Mr. O'Leary, was the, uh, the second item for health department salaries, what, what was your dollar amount there, sir? $5,482.78. Okay, thank you. I said 882 the first time. I have a tendency to mumble. See, mother, I was paying My mother attention. tells me. I was paying attention. <laughs> For the Board of Selectmen's recommendation, Mr. O'Leary. The Board of Selectmen recommends. For the Finance Committee, Mr. Paul. Uh, Finance Committee recommended unanimously. Further discussion? Just uh, by way of explanation, Mr. Chairman, uh, county retirement assessments received in 2014, which was after June town meeting, uh, we used an assumption of 5%, over the increase was uh, approximately 8%, just as uh, a factor of how many people and who retired and what our costs are gonna be. Uh, elder services, one van driver retired, and a part-time employee for elder services took the position going from part-time to full-time, which required benefits and some more hours. And the animal control, Two part-time employees now required to be certified went from $13.10 an hour over at the June town meeting to $15.30 an hour, as well as being a benefited employee working 22 hours a week, thereby necessitating the increases. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Article 8, Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Chairman. I move to transfer from free cash the sum of $50,000 to construct, reconstruct, or make improvements to Town Hall and other municipal buildings, and including all incidental and related costs as specified in Article 8 as printed in the warrant. The recommendation for the Board of Selectmen, Mr. O'Leary. The Board of Selectmen recommends. For the Finance Committee, Mr. Paul. Finance Committee voted to unanimously recommend.
for the discussion, Mr. O'Leary. The specifics of the projects that are going to be undertaken, again, these did not meet the definition of uh, capital plans that you would bond over five years, so these are things that we want to pay out of uh, free cash available funds. Um, town Hall, we're going to replace some of the flooring in Town Hall, primarily in the administrative wing, Board of Selectman's office, carpeting, which is uh, soil that needs to be replaced. Uh, the third meeting house, uh, the uh, senior center, the flooring replacement there. Uh, again, excuse me, $15,400 uh, for the town hall for replacement flooring, $9,500 uh, for uh, senior center. Uh, the fire station, the replacement of the kitchen flooring, I mean, we have 24-7 operation there, it requires uh, some uh, substantial upgrading there, $3,500. And then town hall requires some uh, the replacement of doors and locks and doorknobs uh, for security reasons updating uh, $7,000 and in the library in place of the floor in the library that's up in the children's section I believe upstairs uh, $14,600 for a total of $50,000 further discussion seeing no further discussion all those in favor please say aye Aye. Opposed? Unanimous? Article 9, Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Moderator, I move to pass over Article 9 as printed in the warrant. The recommendation for the board, from the Board of Selectmen, Mr. O'Leary. Board of Selectmen recommends. Passing over. The Finance Committee, Mr. Paul. Finance Committee voted to pass over. Further discussion? Mr. O'Leary. Uh, there are sufficient funds in the current operating budget to uh, meet the uh, projects that are on the board uh, for town road maintenance and upkeep at this particular point in time. And what we're looking to do is uh, a June town meeting. So this will get us through the fall and winter season and into the spring. And in June, before the current year ends, we'll come back with a, uh, an appropriation if there's sufficient funds to uh, take on other projects. So that'll be at the June town meeting. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Article 10, Mr. Prisco. I move to transfer from, the, from free cash the sum of $20,000 for survey services related to town road acceptances as specified in Article 10 printed in the warrant. The recommendation from the Board of Select and Mr. Prisco. Unanimously recommends. For the Finance Committee, Mr. Paul. Finance Committee recommends. For the discussion, Mr. Prisco. This money is for three roads, uh, Adam Street, Swan Pond Road, and some um, areas of Elm Street. These are to get the surveying done so we can get these roads accepted. Uh, it's, you know, three, you look at the $20,000, it does seem like a tremendous amount of money for three roads, but it's 1.1 miles in the Swan Pond area. It's a lot of curves, a lot of, there's no real straight shots to it. So that's why um, the expense of $20,000. Further discussion? Mr. Yule. Yes, Jeff Yule, first week of the Park Street. Is this a state mandate that we have to do this in order to get those chapter 90 funds? Mr. Prisco. Uh, Mr. Yule, if we don't get these roads accepted, then we will not be able to get them into the pool for us to get an increase in our chapter 90 funds, so yes. The answer to your question is yes, we, we need to get them accepted. That was that was my question. My question is, is it a state mandate that we have this study done? It's a it's a state mandate to have accepted roads to be qualify for the chapter ninety money. To get the roads accepted, we have to go through this process of having them surveyed. Now, have we done that on all roads in the past? Because I, I I've, I've been to CPC meetings where we have not uh, uh, Done that. They just went to the CPC. CPC approved them, and they were they were to the state. If I recall correctly, Mr. Carnavale, I believe this is a little different than a street acceptance. 
I think what you're referring to is the street exceptions, which we'll be dealing with later tonight. Mr. Conrado. In a town, the process is the CPC recommends approval, goes to the Board of Selectmen, all streets, including subdivisions, Board of rec Recommendation that comes to town meeting. So irrespective of what kind of road it is, it's got to go through CPC and the uh, Board of Selectmen. Okay. Thank you. Further discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous? Article 11. Mr. Crispo. Mr. Monterey, I move to transfer from free cash the sum of $13,740 to fund North Reading's participation in the North of Boston Regional Share Housing Project in the interest of promoting and monitoring affordable housing as specified in Article 11 printed in the warrant. Recommendation for the Board of Selectmen, Mr. Prisco. Board of Selectmen unanimously recommends. For the Finance Committee, Mr. Paul. Finance Committee wanted to hear the discussion before we voted our recommendation. Okay. Mr. Prisco. Oh, I'm sorry. For the Planning Commission, Mr. Hayden. Planning Commission unanimously recommend. Discussion from the planning administrator. So I just wanted to explain a little bit about the program. Um, this is uh, to fund the creation of a regional housing services office to assist North Reading with uh, maintaining affordable housing units that we already have, and also um, thank you, <laughs> and also in the future to um, potentially in future years um, plan for new affordable housing. However, um, the first year would primarily be devoted to making sure that our inventory is correct accurate and that we don't lose any of the 9.2% uh, you know, affordable housing that we, we currently have. Uh, the, the, the state statute requires that we have 10%. Um, we have, we do not, we're not at that threshold right now. Keep going. Okay. Um, so the, oh, um, so the estimated costs of this uh, program to North Reading would be $13,740. Um, we would be uh, in a consortium of other communities, um, potentially including Reading, Saugus, Danvers, Wilmington, and Peabody. All those communities are in a similar position as we are where we are near the 10% threshold, but not quite there. Um, and you know, it's come to it's come to the planning department's attention recently that a lot of communities have been taking on a more active role in monitoring and compliance because numerous errors have been found in inventories in other communities. And when errors are found, um, often the community just loses the unit, and a lot of work has gone into um, building up the inventory that we have, building new affordable housing. It, it can be really difficult, and you know, we want to do everything that we can to maintain the units that we have. Um, there is a, there's currently a model such as this running um, based in Sudbury with um, six communities that are affiliated with it. And I have heard feedback from um, at least one of those communities that they're very, very happy with the services that have been provided to them. So um, that's why uh, the CPC is supporting this. Um, Further discussion, Mr. O'Leary. As Danielle pointed out, um, right now we're in a pretty good position in relation to affordable housing, the, uh, meeting the percentage of 10% uh, threshold that the state has mandated. Uh, we're at 9.3 or 9.6, or whatever it is. But what, uh, if you recall, over the past eight to 10 years, a significant amount of time and effort was put in uh, by the Zone Board of Appeals and various subcommittees uh, to uh, evaluate 40B applications. Most of you here are familiar with the 40B application. Uh, the town has to come for us to uh, take a look at those applications uh, for affordable housing and weigh what's in the best interest of the community and make a determination and either approve it or disapprove. If we disapprove, it gets appealed to the state. Because of the process that we have here in uh, Threading up to this point, we've actually turned out to be a model for the, for, the, for the state as to how to handle them. So we've done a very good job. However, 
at this particular juncture, you know, we're about a third to a half of the way through the timeline for these affordable units um, to expire. Uh, when someone builds one of these affordable housing developments, 25% um, of the housing units have to be affordable. Uh, this is generally a 25-year timeline on those mortgage, on those deeds as, as far as a restriction. Once that 25 years are up, they can then potentially sell them at market rates and we lose the affordable units. What got us over the threshold was the project out on Route 62 uh, by Lincoln Properties, which gave us 400 credit for 406 units. There's 406 uh, rental units out there. We got credit for 100% of them. Only 25% are affordable. When those expire, say 25 years, so probably about, probably there's six years now, six or seven years, uh, when those expire, those 25%, those 100 units, and actually all 400, fall off the books. So what's critical for us is to maintain uh, an inventory and keep track of what we have and what we're getting credit for. Uh, we don't have the staff in place, and we shouldn't necessarily have to hire additional staff to do so. So MAPC is proposing these regional uh, groupings of communities to do this monitoring for us. So this is a pilot program that we're looking to invest in at this particular point in time. The good thing is we can uh, opt out after one year. So if we're not going to get the bang for the buck and it's not going to give us uh, the information that we need, we can always opt out. Uh, I think it's important for us to uh, take this step in ensuring that we're monitoring our affordable units appropriately, uh, that we're planning appropriately for down the road when these things fall off the books and we have to go step back up. You know, when we added those 400 units, we also picked up an obligation to add 40 more affordable units, 10%. So that's why we're below the 10% uh, threshold at this particular time. So this will give us, uh, hopefully, uh, some sort of uh, information, resources uh, to look at some long-range planning. Uh, we're going to be here at the infancy stage of this. I would say let's get in on it now. If it doesn't work out, you don't have to buy in and opt in for the second year. So I think it's uh, money well spent at this particular point in time, and it's not too soon to be thinking about it. So I would urge uh, the community to support this particular item at this point in time. And I know the Board of Selectmen this evening uh, unanimously supported this, but also said, you know, once we buy into it, come next October, let's see what we got. The contract is signed and hopefully it gets in place by next April. We'll have six months of a track record to see what we're getting uh, for our investment. So I would, I would uh, suggest that we buy into the program at this point in time. Mr. Yo. I just want to make sure that I heard uh, Danielle is that her name. Uh, she said possible participation with Red and Red with Fifty. So it's going to, does that mean they are not online with this as of yet, or is this a possibility? Danielle. By October 18th, the communities have been asked to indicate whether they intend to participate. Um, so far, uh, the, the one community we know is is planning on it would, would be Reading as the lead in town. Um, we're waiting, we're all waiting to, to give our final answers and they need to have four communities to move forward with it. Um, if they don't have commitments for more than it would give them. Mr. Yo. Is there a restriction or limitation or minimum of uh, towns that need to participate in the For need to participate. Thank you. And again, if there are not enough communities to buy in, we don't have to spend the money, but we'll have it appropriated uh, if we deem it necessary. And again, as the contract unfolds and we see more of the details, uh, we'll weigh whether or not it's in our best interest. But the timeline is here. We need to make a decision. I would urge you to support it. Mr. Perkins. Hi. Uh, Steve mentioned uh, uh, the Lincoln Properties Project. Uh, I'm not sure need to stay on topics germane to the issue, but Mr. O'Leary. But it is. We're not necessarily talking about building more affordable housing projects and proposals. Again, we're, we're somewhat limited as far as what we have for space, um, but there's, you're absolutely right. The, uh, the amount of water that's available for us is a critical issue, 
which the board is working on for some long-term solutions, not just with the Andover, with the BMWRA or other resources, uh, but that's part of a long-term, long-range plan. But it does fall in line with, you know, what can we actually support? For the Finance Committee recommendation, Mr. Powell. Finance Committee recommends. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Finance Committee's recommendation was on the article, not on the motion to pass over, so we'll now hold up one minute, just so we get clarification.
Sir. This is Bob Castle, of Liberty Lane. Uh, I think it's wise to pass over this article at this time. Uh, I've been in the energy business for many years. I'm very familiar with how these kind of transactions work. And uh, although solar power and any renewable energy is a good thing uh, for the environment, uh, it can be a very expensive thing if not done uh, correctly. And these things are fraught with risk. Uh, from everything from regulatory risk to counterparty risk, etc. So I think it's a wise idea to proceed very cautiously with this type of stuff. Thank you. Just a castle, the senior flag for the study committee. <laughs> <laughs> they got your name and address. There's some real business in the room, I think, though. Sir. You're just looking to get some questions answered. Yeah. And you can reach out to the town administrator's office for now, and he'll put you in touch with the right people. Okay. This is a motion to pass over, so it's to kill the article. So let's stay it germane to the motion, which is to not discuss the article. <laughs> Mr. Coleman. Favor of the motion to pass over, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? No, I don't. 
Motion carries. Article 13. Mr. Foley. Mr. Monterey, I move to transfer from free cash the sum of $8,000 to purchase automatic exterior defibrillators for municipal buildings as specified in Article 13 as printed in the warrant. Recommendation for the Board of Select on Mr. Foley. Board of Select, me and recommend. The Finance Committee, Mr. Foley. Finance Committee, recommend. For the discussion, Mr. Foley. I, I just want to point out where the four are going. They're going to be two at Town Hall, one at DBW, and one at the library. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous? Article 15, Mr. Foley. My tabs got stuck together. <laughs> Article 14, Mr. Foley. Mr. Moderator, move to pass over Article 14. Recommendation for the selectmen, Mr. Foley. Select and vote to uh, recommend pass over. For the? By a 3 to 2 vote. For the Finance Committee, Mr. Foley. Finance Committee voted to pass over. Mr. Ewell. Uh, Mr. Moderator, can we hear uh, from the Board of Selectmen? Uh, they need to vote individual votes. Is that in order? I, I didn't hear the question. The, the question was can we hear from the Board of Selectmen their reasons for passing over or not passing over? It was a 3 2 vote. If, if they so desire, that, would the Board of Selectmen majority and minority opinions like to speak on the issue? No. Oh. Okay. Mr. O'Leary. Uh, you certainly deserve an explanation as to, you know, it was a 3 to 2 vote. And, um, originally proposed was a uh, there was concern in relation to a morale problem of our employees, not just at Town Hall, but uh, throughout uh, the, the entire workforce. And it was recommended uh, that we fund a study to uh, interview, get to the root of the issues, and try and uh, address them. Uh, when it was all said and done, a discussion took place. The majority of the board, on a three to two vote, uh, decided to uh, pass over and maybe for very different reasons. I can only tell you what my reasons were. Uh, the appropriation amount is, is going to be $10,000. Uh, first of all, I think uh, we can spend money, $10,000, on some other uh, important issues. I don't find this to be as a priority. My particular uh, take on the situation in relation to the morale, what appears to be evident to me is not necessarily evident to my colleagues. Uh, I personally believe uh, that uh, most of the morale problem within uh, town government, town employees, uh, it starts with the board, and I think we need to assume that responsibility. I think the way that we treat our town administrator, our department heads as they come before us is quite visible, and I think we have to be cognizant of how, how we uh, project ourselves, and I think that permeates down through the, through the organization. Some of my colleagues feel it's something different, uh, but my reason and rationale for uh, voting uh, to pass this over is, it's quite evident to me where the problem lies, where it starts, and where we need to begin uh, addressing the situation. So I didn't think it was wise to stand before you and ask you to appropriate $10,000 of your tax dollars uh, to address something that I found to be quite evident. I'll leave it to the rest of my colleagues to give their reasons why. Mr. Delaney. Thank you, Mr. Moderate. I was in the minority, one of the two. Uh, since coming out of the board, I've spent a fair amount of time at Town Hall, spent a uh, sufficient amount of time speaking to various employees, both within Town Hall and outside of Town Hall. 
And uh, to me, there's clearly a morale problem. There's not an issue concerning work productivity. I think we have some of the best uh, municipal employees that may be throughout the commonwealth. So that was never an issue. I know that was raised at one particular town meeting, or it's been suggested to me that the board feels as though that uh, we don't have productive employees. That could not be filed further from the truth. But it's clear to me that there is an issue in town hall. And Mr. O'Leary may be right. They may be the board selected. But also, there may be other issues that are driving the morale issue at town hall. And I know some, some members of the board, along with myself, will be getting phone calls. Phone calls from friends and family members and employees that there are issues at town hall. We, I, for one, feel the best way to get to do that problem is have the independent study go in, survey all the employees throughout municipal government, see what the issues are, and come up with solutions on how to rectify that issue. I don't think town hall or anywhere in municipal government, people should wake up in the morning and don't feel like coming to work because there is an issue, whether it's the board imposed upon them, or the supervisor, or the administration. I think we owe that to our municipal employees to get to the root of the problem and find a solution for it. Mr. O'Leary is incorrect. The, the, the value or the cost of this survey would be $5,500. I think it's money very well spent um, to find the root of the problem, get a solution. Our employees deserve it. That's why I was in the minority. I wanted this item to be voted on and to be passed. Thank you. Sir, my name is Joe Giganti. I'm currently the electrical inspector in the town of North Reading. And I am one of the longer term employees in the town hall. I've lived in this town for 60 years. You speak about a morale problem. I'd like to ask any of the board of selectmen if they took a survey of any of the town employees to find out where this problem was. I have never talked to any of them. Nobody's ever come up to me and asked me, uh, is there a problem that you can see? And I lived there just a while. I'm sorry this issue came up. It's in the globe. It's a reflection of what goes on in our town and all the workers. I, I'm glad that you voted to pass over the side. And I would hope that it never comes up. And I'd like to also say I support the current town administration. Thank you. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion to pass over, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Motion carries. Article 15. Mr. Foley. Mr. Moderator, move to pass over Article 15. The recommendation for the board of selectmen, Mr. Foley. Board of selectmen, your name is recommended. This is zoning. Does the finance committee wish to make a recommendation? Or? Finance committee recommends to pass over. For the community planning commission, Mr. Hay. Community planning commission recommend to pass over. Uh, pass over. Further discussion? Mr. Yo. Yes, Mr. Martin, I'm ready to thank you. Can you have an explanation of why for the board they are passing over uh, this article? Mr. Foley? Yes, um, I believe at last week's EPC meeting there were some questions regarding um, the, the, as it was written, and we agreed that we would meet with the ZBA, the CPC, and the board select and the work towards bringing this back uh, in, at the June town meeting. Further discussion? <laughs> Melanie Gobea, 63 Bumblehead Street. I was initially happy to hear that we were passing over this article, uh, but now we have further information that we may be considering at the end of June. I'd just like to state um, that as I drive around town or even walk by certain properties in town, 
There are properties that appear to me to be quite ugly, and perhaps some of that is because of a greater than four foot retaining wall. But while that's my own personal opinion, I don't feel that it's the business of town hall to tell property owners how to prop how to beautify their property. Thank you. Mr. Bollier. Uh, there's been a commitment made on the part of the Board of Selectmen and Planning Commission and the Zoning Board of Appeals to take a look at this, this issue. And while I'm sympathetic to, to the lady's uh, comments, you know, what this is specifically, uh, what the genesis was, was, was the wall up on our Bishop's Way. And what we're going to be facing uh, going forward is a lot of lots of North Reading which were formerly deemed to be unbuildable or not worth spending the money to build on. Um, unless you go when you build these huge monstrosities where you can engineer any type of a, you can engineer anything to make it work. And as we have over there, we have almost a nine foot wall uh, to make a septic system work. It's the last lot in this whole subdivision to be built and there's a reason for that. But you know, the economies of scale is such that it's now worth their while to make the investment and do it. As such, uh, some of us believe that there should be some sort of a site plan review process to maintain or to ensure some sort of integrity to the neighborhood without an adverse impact. We're not looking to stop people from building. We're not looking to, to stop people from investing in their properties. Um, it was pointed out at the Planning Commission meeting by other people that maybe what we've proposed here is, is a little bit too far reaching. Uh, so that what we'd like to do is just take a few months, to take a step back and uh, collaboratively with the Planning Commission and the Zoning Board of Appeals come up with another proposal. But I think it's important, extremely important, that we do address the issue, that we do take a look at it, and we do it in conjunction with the Board of Health, so that there is some sort of site plan review. I mean, we don't have the luxury of other communities that have uh, you know, a sewer system. You know, so what happens is, is these, built, these lots that are vacant now, and maybe deemed buildable with an engineered plan, are gonna have some unsightly, Proposal put forth, which can adversely impact the neighbors who invested a lot of money and time uh, in the community. So, uh, I think we need to take a look at it. What the solution is going to be, I don't know. I hope we come up with some sort of a compromise that we can address it and again protect people's rights to build, but at the same time protect the investments that people have already made in their neighborhood. Mr. Eagle. Thank you. Uh, two things. Uh, the first of all, uh, the Zoning Board issue like this is really a property rights issue. I think that if you're going to have this same discussion in June, I think you're going to get a lot of pushback on uh, uh, property rights because people basically should have the rights to, to do with their property what they wish. Also, uh, this is an item that really should have been initiated through the CPC, which is it's under their uh, domain to handle uh, community planning uh, issues. Uh, I don't believe that the Board of Selectmen should have initially generated this conversation. It should have been directed, as they have in the past, directly to the CPC. And I would like to think that the CPC will be the ones that uh, take, take this role and run with it as they see fit. Thank you. Is this on the motion to pass over? The reason to pass over. Okay, I'll give you that. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Pierce. Thank you, thank you. I wasn't, Mr. Moderator, I wasn't going to get into any of the, uh, the walls or anything. I think what I wanted to say was that uh, we're very comfortable with the fact that the Board of Selectmen and, and, and the Planning Board have got to work together to craft something that addresses these issues in a way that uh, addresses a little more than just walls, but perhaps a final grading plan. So, so uh, passing over it gives us the opportunity to put something a little more comprehensive together. And I think you'll be happy with that than, than what we're looking at now. Thank you. <coughs> Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of passing over, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous? Article 16, this is Delaney. To moderate Article 16, Event Code, Zoning Bylaws, Article 17, Site Plan Review, Section 200-00, Appeals. We move to pass over Article 16 as printed in the warrant. Recommendation. 
recommendation for the Board of Selectmen, Mr. Delaney. Board of Selectmen unanimously recommends passing over Article 16. Do, does the Finance Committee, it's a zoning article, you don't question, do you want to weigh in? Mr. Paul, for the Finance Committee. The Finance Committee recommends to pass over. Mr. Hayden, for the Community Planning Commission. Planning Commission recommend to pass over. Discussion, Mr. Delaney. Mr. Moderator, the Board has decided to recommend passing over this article for the following reason. Site, for education, for those of you who don't know, Site Plan Review is under the purview of the Community Planning Commission. Uh, and by state statute, any appeal of any party that's agreed by the Site Plan Review process uh, is to go to either the District Court or the Superior Court. Well, we have a bifurcated process here in our favor by bylaw. Party can choose to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals. So there appears to be a conflict between state law and our own bylaws. Uh, the board unanimously believes that giving an agreed party an opportunity to try to resolve any issues that come out of the site plan and review process at the local level is probably the better way to proceed. And the board would hope that we can work something out in conjunction with the town councils involved and we're going to seek an opinion from the Attorney General's office to see if we can still somehow keep a local uh, way for an agreed body to review the site plan review process. Uh, and that's why we're asking to pass over. And depending upon what the Attorney General issues an opinion on, we may be coming back in June town meeting. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous? Article 17. Mr. Delaney. Mr. Moderator. Article 17, Men Code, Zoning Bylaws, Article 22, Section 200-127C. The move to amend the Code of the no Town of North Reading Zoning Bylaws, Article 22, Lot Slope Requirements, Section 200-127C, General Provisions, to delete the word ration in the last sentence and replace it with ratio in order to correct typographical error and to authorize non-substantive changes to the numbering of the bylaw in order that it be in compliance with the numbering format of the Code of North Reading specified in Article 17 of the Warrant. The recommendation from the Board of Selectmen, Mr. Delaney. The board unanimously recommends. Finance Committee. Finance Committee recommends fixing typos. <laughs> Especially in numbers, right? For the Community Planning Commission, Mr. Hayden. Planning Commission unanimously recommend. Further discussion? This is a zoning article, so it does require a two-thirds vote, even though it's only fixing typos. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Article 18, Mr. Delaney. Mr. Moderator, Article 18, Men Code, Zoning Bylaws, Article 23, Wind Energy Facilities. I move to amend the Code of North Reading Zoning Bylaws, Article 23, Wind Energy Facilities Bylaw. We're making the following changes in order to correct typographical errors. One, section 200-131D3N, delete WEFs and replace it with WEFs apostrophe S and replace it with WEFS. Two, section 200-131D4C, delete superimpositions apostrophe S and replace it with superimpositions. Four, three, section 200-131D4D, delete 18 and replace it with 18th. Four, section 200-131D5B, delete provide and replace it with provided. Five, section 200-132A, four, delete WEF apostrophe S and replace it with WEFS. And to authorize non-substantive changes to the numbering of the bylaw in order that it be in compliance with the numbering format. If the code of North Reading is specified in Article 18 of the warrant. Recommendation for the selectmen, Mr. Delaney. Board of Selectmen unanimously recommends. The Finance Committee, Mr. Paul. Finance Committee recommends. For the Community Planning Commission, Mr. Hayden. Community Planning Commission unanimously recommends. 
Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Article 19, Mr. Delaney. Mr. Moderator, Article 19, amend zoning bylaws, Article 20, Berry Center, Residential Smart Growth Overlay District, CGA. I move to amend the Code of North Reading Zoning Bylaws, Article 20, Berry Center, Residential Smart Growth Overlay District, SGA, by making the following non substantive changes in order to correct typographical errors. One, Section 200 103 b in the definition of building area, omit building, replace it with. Section 200-103B in the definition of building area omit B-U-I-L-D-L-I-N-G, replace it with building in the same definition, replace balcony with balconies. Section in two, section 200-104A in the second to last sentence, at a closed bracket immediately following the text, approximately seven tenths of one 0 0.7 acre to read approximately 7 tenths of 1 acre. 0 0.7 acre. 3, section 200-108E2, replace subsection E below with subsection F below. 4, section 200-108E15, change the reference to item 15 above to read subsection E14 above. Five, section 200-109A in the requirements for minimum open space, change the words driveways and driveways to driveways and drive lanes. Six, section 200-111B4, delete the word foot candles and replace it with, well, <laughs> the words foot candles and replace it with foot candles, one word. Seven, section 200-112D2, delete the word account and replace it with accounts. 8. Section 200-113A. Delete the PAA regulations. You replace it with... All right, help. Help. What? Oh, double quote. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. With the... All right, I'll start again. 8. Section 200-113A. Delete the... Open quote, PAA regulations, replace it with the quote, PAA regulations, quote, close quote. <laughs> Nine, section 200-113E in F, delete therefore with an E, replace it with therefore without the E. Number 10, section 200-114A, delete this section, XX.0, and replace it with this article 20 and to authorize non-substantive changes to the numbering of the bylaw in order that it be in compliance with the numbering format of the code of north reading specified in article 19 of the law sean I, I thought you were the chairman so how'd you have to read these things <laughs> The recommendation for the Board of Selectmen, if you have the energy. Uh, Board of Selectmen unanimously recommends. For the Finance Committee, Mr. Paul. Finance Committee recommends. For the Community Planning Commission, Mr. Hayden. Community Planning Commission unanimously recommends. Further discussion? Sir.
ashamed to say some are and some aren't. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The periods are not part of the proposed changes. Just for purposes of clarification, the, um, the periods, in some cases, in the motion, as it was read, the periods are inside the quotations and sometimes outside the quotations. They're not part of what is changing in the article like in some of the town councils. So the bigger issue would be to make sure the periods end up in the final book the right way. So it's just a period. Some, some got misplaced by one place. Don't you love words? <laughs> Men. Greg Gillespie, 15, another room. Haven't you ever heard of proofreading the material before it's sent to Further discussion. <laughs> All those in favor, please say aye. Unanimous. Article 20, Mr. Foley. Mr. Moderator, I move to accept the layout of John Bigford way as specified, I'm sorry, as a public way as specified in Article 20 and printed in the warrant to authorize the Board of Selectmen to acquire by purchase, gift, eminent domain, or otherwise the fee of lesser interest in the land within said way and any easements related thereto and to further raise and appropriate the sum of one dollar for said purposes. Recommendation for the Board of Selectmen, Mr. Foley. Board of Selectmen, you need to recommend. For the Finance Committee, Mr. Paul. Finance Committee, recommend. The CPC, Mr. Hayden. The Planning Commission, unanimously you know, recommend. Mr. Yule.
believe me, I had the same thought. It's a taking of land. It's, there's monetary value. It requires a two-thirds vote. If we did it in one motion and one thing comes up, we're going back to square one. It's not like the revolving funds that we do at the annual town meeting. Thank you. But I do appreciate the effort, Mr. Ewell. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Margaret, yes. Um, so, Foley. yeah, items 20 through 29 are all street occurrences. Um, these streets have all um, been reviewed, correct, Mr. Uh, Valley. Um, the purpose of accepting these roads are for every mile that, that we accept or have additional uh, mileage of road, um, we get more Chapter 90 money, which is state funding for road work. I believe for every mile we get an additional between thirteen dollars and $15,000 in state funds. Okay. This, through Article 29, all require two-thirds votes. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Article 21, Mr. Foley. Mr. Moderator, move to accept the layout of Poplar Terrace as a public way as specified in Article 21 within the warrant and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to acquire by purchase, gift, eminent domain, or otherwise the fee of lesser interest in the land within said way and, and any easements related thereto and to further raise and appropriate the sum of one dollar for said purposes. The recommendation for the selectmen, Mr. Foley. Board of selectmen, you need to recommend. For the Finance Committee, Mr. Fowler. Finance Committee, recommend. For the Community Planning Commission, Mr. Hayden. Community, the Community Planning Commission unanimously recommend. Further discussion? Sir. Mr. Moderator, your speech is as a seven righteous circle. My question to the town is, these are the private ways that we've had in existence for many years. Are there any minimum standards that are being met before we take on these roads, such as drainage or water systems? Mr. Carnavale, the director of DPW. Thank you. Yes, uh, town engineers gone through all the roads to make sure they meet that CPC standard for width and things like that. So all the roads have been gone through. Part of the, like the surveying cost earlier, there's as built, but what actually what's there in the layout plans. So there's been quite a lot to go into before we bring it forward. Thank you. Further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous, Article 22. Mr. Foley. Mr. Moderator, I move to accept the layout of Haywood Avenue as a public way as specified in Article 22 and printed in the warrant to authorize the Board of Selectmen to acquire by purchase, gift, eminent domain, or otherwise the fee or lesser interest in the land within said way and any easements related thereto and further raise and appropriate the sum of one dollar for said purpose. Mr. Moderator, please say aye. The recommendation for the Selectmen, Mr. Foley. Board of Selectmen recommend. The Finance Committee, Mr. Paul. Finance Committee recommends. For the Community Planning Commission, Mr. Hayden. Planning Commission, you may absolutely recommend. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Article 23, Mr. Foley. Mr. Moderator, move to accept the layout of Quimby Road as a public way as specified in Article 23 and printed on the warrant to authorize the Board of Selectmen to acquire by purchase, gift, eminent domain, or otherwise the fee or lesser interest in the land within said way and any easement related thereto to further raise and appropriate the sum of one dollar for said purpose. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Selectman recommend. The Finance Committee, Mr. Paul. Finance Committee recommend. For the Community Planning Commission, Mr. Hayden. Planning Commission recommend. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Article 24, Mr. Foley. Mr. Moderator, I move to accept the layout of Gage Road as a public way as specified in Article 24 and printed in the warrant to authorize the Board of Selectmen to acquire by purchase, gift, eminent domain, or otherwise the fee or lesser interest in the land within said way and any easements related thereto and to further raise and appropriate the sum of one dollar for said purposes. Recommendation for the Board of Selectmen. Mr. Foley. Board of Selectmen recommend. 
The Finance Committee, Mr. Fowler. Finance Committee recommends. The Community Planning Commission, Mr. Hayden. Planning Commission recommend. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Article 25, Mr. Foley. Mr. Moderator, I move to accept the layout of Cameron Road as a public way as specified in Article 25 and printed in the warrant to further and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to acquire by purchase, gift, eminent domain, or otherwise the fee or lesser interest in the land within said way and any easements related thereto and to further raise and appropriate the sum of one dollar for said purposes. Mr. Moderator, I move to the recommendation for the Selectmen, Mr. Foley. Selectmen recommend. For the Finance Committee, Mr. Paul. Finance Committee recommend. For the CPC, Mr. Hayden. Planning Commission recommend. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Unanimous. Article 26. Mr. Moderator, I move to, I move to accept the layout of Caroline Way as a public way as specified in Article 26 and printed in the warrant and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to acquire by purchase, gift, eminent domain, or otherwise the fee or lesser interest in the land set within said way and any easements related thereto and to further raise and appropriate the sum of one dollar for said purposes. Recommendation for the Selectman, Mr. Foley. Selectman recommend. For the Finance Committee, Mr. Paula. Finance Committee recommend. For the CPC, Mr. Hayden. Planning Commission recommend. <clears throat> Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Article 27, Mr. Foley. Mr. Moderator, I move to accept the layout of Wadsworth Road as a public way as specified in Article 27 and printed in the warrant to authorize the Board of Selectmen to acquire by purchase, gift, eminent domain, or otherwise the fee or lesser interest in the land within said way and any easements related thereto and to further raise and appropriate the sum of one dollar for said purposes. For the Selectmen, Mr. Foley. Selectmen recommend. For the Finance Committee, Mr. Paul. The Finance Committee recommend. For the CPC, Mr. Hayden. Planning Commission recommends. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Article 28, Mr. Foley. Mr. Moderator, I move to accept the layout of Vogue Street as a public way as specified in Article 28 and printed on the warrant to authorize the Board of Selectmen to acquire by purchase, gift, eminent domain, or otherwise the fee or lesser interest in the land within said way and any easements related thereto, and to further raise and appropriate the sum of one dollar for said purposes. For the Selectmen, Mr. Foley. Selectmen recommend. For the Finance Committee, Mr. Paul. Finance Committee recommend. For the CPC, Mr. Hayden. Planning Commission recommends. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous? Article 29, Mr. Foley. Last one. See what the new guy has to go through? Uh, Mr. Moderator, I move to accept the layout of MacArthur Road as a public way as specified in Article 29 and printed in the warrant to authorize the Board of Selectmen to acquire by purchase, gift, eminent domain, or otherwise the fee or lesser interest in the land within said way and any easement related did to which to further raise and appropriate the sum of one dollar for said purposes. If you need a new career, you could be one of those speed readers on the radio. I was going to do those commercials. I was going to do an Well, that too. For the Selectmen, Mr. Foley. Selectmen recommend. For the Finance Committee, Mr. Fowler. Finance Committee recommends. For the CPC, Mr. Hayden. Planning Commission recommends. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous? Do I have a motion? Mr. Delaney. Mr. Moderator, motion to adjourn, sign a die. I move to adjourn this meeting, sign a die. We have a motion. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you very much for coming out.